energy to power everything. Reducing the amount of energy used reduces our carbon footprint and contributes to overall reduction of the planet's energy consumption. Every effort counts. Today we will be looking at two different efforts to increase energy efficiency in both Minnesota and Mexico. Here at the University of Minnesota Duluth, we are currently focusing on energy efficiency upgrades and energy conservation strategies in the buildings. By 2020, UMD is shooting for 25% in reduction emissions while also working towards a carbon neutral campus by 2050. This is all outlined in UMD's Action Energy Plan, which was published in June 2011. One of the uh, biggest users of energy, and specifically electricity, is buildings. So heating our buildings, powering our buildings, cooling our buildings, and then just getting fresh air into our buildings. In 2007, UMD's carbon footprint was 57,561 metric tons of CO2 emissions, which is about the weight of 318 blue whales. In 2010, UMD reduced its carbon footprint to 54,577 metric tons of CO2 emissions, a 5% drop in carbon emissions, diminishing our carbon footprint by about the weight of 17 blue whales. About 90% of campus emissions come from two sources, the steam plant that heats campus buildings and electricity purchased to power campus. In the winter, we're heating using natural gas-fired uh, steam plant, so that isn't using as much electricity, but you still have to move air around, right? And fans and things use a lot of electricity. It's not very exciting, but building science is really going to be part of our energy future. First, figuring out how to operate our buildings the most efficiently that we can. Natural gas, coal, and oil make up the greenhouse gas emissions released due to the operation of our university. In order to heat domestic water and space heat its buildings, UMD utilizes natural gas. On the other hand, 80% of the university's power comes from coal, which has been purchased from Minnesota Power. We have the ability to burn oil in our heating plant, but have not done this since 2007. Instead, the usage of oil goes towards transportation. Over the years, UMD has been implementing many sustainable efforts. These include chilled water upgrades and heating plant distribution upgrades. The chilled water project consisted of a system upgrade of the current cooling system. New pipelines were put in to create a loop of pipes between UMD buildings. This allowed UMD to shut down some of the old cooling system to save energy consumption. Several green buildings also exist on campus. Numerous buildings have been built to, or renovated to comply with LEED certifications. Several other buildings have been updated to increase energy efficiency but don't meet LEED certification standards. LEED stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. This certification is based upon a point system. Projects pursuing the four levels of LEED certification earn points across several areas that address sustainability issues. Our Swenson Civil Engineering Building and the Labovitz School of Business and Economics are both Gold LEED certified. The Bagley Nature Center was the first to be certified LEED at the Platinum level and there are two other buildings that are LEED certified silver. UMD has also started to slowly add solar to campus. There are currently two solar panel sites at UMD. One of these sites consists of 28 panels installed on top of Mulaski Stadium in 2008. These panels have a total electric power capacity of 5,824 watts, which is enough to power most household appliances. Each panel is rated to produce 7 amps of current at 29 volts in full sunlight. To put that in perspective, we use about 2.6 amps to power a 46-inch plasma TV. The second site, Bagley Outdoor Classroom, also features 28 solar panels that were installed in 2010. One of Bagley's goals with solar is to produce as much energy as it uses each year, but this goal has yet to be met. The Bagley panels have a total power capacity of 5,600 watts. In addition to these large sites, our campus also has many small-scale solar experiments and installations around campus. At any solar that we build at UMD up to 750 kilowatts would be financially viable for us. It would save us money over 20 years. No matter what, before the end of the year, we're going to have a plan in place to at least double and maybe up to triple our solar production. In April of this year, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory did a screening of our campus. These results included cost effectiveness of solar, recommended system size, estimated capital cost to implement that technology, and estimated life cycle savings. Solar powered energy is an exciting option for UMD, but ultimately would replace 1% of campus's overall energy footprint. 
the University of Minnesota Duluth is committed to keep working on becoming more environmentally friendly through solar power, green buildings, and other realistic options that become available. In general though, I would say our students want to see more solar. It's the first question they ask about energy is why don't we have more solar on campus? And I oftentimes tell them, you know, more solar is great, but we also need to work on energy efficiency and making our buildings more efficient. Because the cleanest unit of power that you ever have is the one you never use, right? So. Hi guys! We are the team Blood In, Blood Out, and our topic is energy. We're going to present the research of the community La Pila. We make some surveys to the people who live there to see how the quality of the service of electricity is. And we collect some information about the knowledge of importance of energy saving. We hope you like it. The community La Pila is located in the state of San Luis Potosí. There is a population of 5,974. We work in the principal square asking people about electricity service and energy saving. Our main objective is to collect qualitative data in the community of La Pila about quality of electricity service and energy efficiency. We made a survey about service, cost and ways to save energy. We realized that people know about ways to save energy and that this is very important for them. During our research in the community, we faced some challenges, one in particular was some people didn't know how to write. Because of this, we had to write their answers. Also, sometimes they didn't understand the questions and we needed to explain them. Most of the people have their rooms in their house. Those who do have more than four rooms have more because they live in tenement housing. Additionally, they don't have bulbs in every room of their house. We asked the questions to people of different ages, and although many were young, they had an idea of how much their parents paid for the electricity and how the service was in the community. In addition, the elderly are also aware of ways to save electricity. They told us that the lighting in the main square has not been repaired for some time, but the street lighting does not have any problems. We chose some graphics about the surveys that we did. The people told us the electricity service is good, though sometimes they have a lot of bulbs. On another hand, the result of the service of our friends as well as the community. We conclude that in terms of electricity service, there is not a very serious problem in the community. As far as the cost of this service, it is a bit difficult to define because the problems are merely social because of the tenement housing. The only problem that we identified was the lack of information about the importance of sustainability. Most people do it simply for the cost saving as we mentioned before, and we should be aware that saving energy is not just about money. It is also to improve the planet and so future generations have a good place to live.